From New York City, tracking the ever-evolving landscape of the NBA, it's NBA TV's coverage of the 2019 NBA Draft Future Stars, presented by State Farm. In Brooklyn, tomorrow, 60 picks will be announced by Commissioner Adam Silver as the next generation enters the NBA. It is a bright future for many of these stars who are joining us here, 20 of them with us at the Grand Hyatt. Steve Smith, I'm Jared Greenberg. We're going to speak to so many different people, including the presumptive number one overall pick, Zion Williamson. Welcome inside the building, and we welcome in Jared Culver from Texas Tech is our first guest here. Sorry sorry for you that you got to be the first guy in the hot seat here. No, that, I love it. I love it. That Thanks means you get the me. hardest questions. <laughs> yes, sir. And Smitty comes off uh, a little angry at you to start off. So, <laughs> so Smitty, you want to fire away first? No, I just want to say I've watched his progression. First of all, he's uh, he came in looking fantastic. Yes, I mean, I, I just love his dress, but I just love the way he approached the game and saw this progression the last two years. Talk to us first about just this whole entire process since you ended your last college game uh -huh. to now. Uh, it's been very busy, but I'm enjoying every moment of it. It's, I have a, like, a great opportunity, so I'm just smelling the roses, as you can say, and I'm enjoying every moment. You've been described as a guy who's addicted to basketball. Yeah. So what is it like for you now to know that this will, starting tomorrow night, be your profession for as long as you can make it? It doesn't get better than playing the game that you love as a job. And I mean, it's, it's been a dream to make it to the NBA. I worked very hard for it. so. I feel like it's a great opportunity for me. You, you've made good in Lubbock growing up, going to Texas Tech, but there's no professional team in Lubbock, I've learned. And, uh -huh. and Commissioner Silver says they're not expanding there. <laughs> yeah. So how does it feel now to know that you're going to have to leave that nest and, and go somewhere that you're not really sure where that is right now? I feel like I adjust very well. And just coming from Lubbock, it's all love out there. And I feel like I'm not even supposed to be here coming from Lubbock, Texas. But I mean, God gave me a talent, and I have this platform, so I want to use it for his glory. Well, let me talk about just your game. First of all, you come from a, a university and a coaching staff where you guys preach defense, 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 yeah. and playing hard. Then also you had your siblings. So, you, so uh -huh. you know how to compete. What's next for you, the evolution of your game, I think, on the offensive end? Because I think you're NBA ready for sure uh -huh. on the defensive end. I, I agree with that. And just coming from one of the best defensive schools in the country, it kind of installed in me that I have to play defense to play. And then on the offensive end, I just want to perfect my craft, expand it every day, and it's a lot more space in the NBA, a lot, a lot of uh, better guys. So, I mean, I feel like I'm going to adjust very well and, you know, just working on my game every day. You know, you're comfortable, very comfortable with the ball in your hand. You play a little point guard in high school. Uh -huh. Off the ball, what do you think you have to work on and also your shooting-wise? Uh, spacing, I got to work on the spacing. Uh, the NBA level, it's a lot of spacing. So, just making sure I work on that and then, this off the ball, just my shot, just making sure I work on that every day. Uh, my percentages went down from freshman to sophomore year, but I, I'm confident in my shot. I work on it every day. I put a lot of shots up, so I'm confident. Everyone who has watched you or has worked with you has described you as, as unselfish, mm -hmm. as a team first guy, mm -hmm. which is what you want to be described as. Yes, sir. But throughout this draft process, has any of playing the quote unquote right way kind of affected how people perceive how good you as an individual can be? Uh, at the end of the day, it kind of could, but I'm all about winning. Whatever I got to do to win, I want to win. So if that's passing the ball, having nine assists, or if it's scoring 20 points, or playing defense, I'll, at the end of the day, I want to win. So whatever I got to do, that's what I'm going to do. Now, win. you got pretty far this year. Texas Tech was the national runner-up. How much has that f fueled your fire? It's been it's fueling my fire, uh, kind of losing in championship game, just staying motivated. But it was a blessing. It was a great experience to get there. Not too many people have that. So mm -hmm. I had a great team, great coaches. And I mean, it's, it's a lifetime moment for me. Now, when you watched the way you played last year, the ball was in your hands a lot. Uh -huh. You got a chance to make a lot of decisions. Um, you're looking at it right now is if a team puts the ball in your hand, do you feel you can be a guy that can facilitate and score and do all the little things on the offensive end? I feel like I'm, I'm ready for that and I'm ready for that opportunity. I feel like teams see me that way and could put the ball in my hands and I make plays. Uh, I feel like good things happen with the ball in my hand. and. You know, I'm unselfish, and I, I feel like I can make the right plays. Now, looking at on the court, now everything about the NBA is a lot off the court. Are uh -huh. you ready for everything to come <laughs> off the court in the NBA? Yes, I, I hear about it all the time, but you don't really realize if you're ready or not until you experience it. But I, I'm going to keep my people around me, surround myself with the right people, and stay focused and stay true to myself. So I feel like I'm ready. One of those people is, is your father, uh -huh. who was, was the team chaplain at Texas Tech. Curious, was there ever a, a pregame prayer session that maybe veered off course a little bit and, 
and, and went to something that wasn't necessarily about the, the prayer book and it was about the game or about life or, or something else? <laughs> yeah, sometimes he talks about Michael Jordan a lot and then he talks <laughs> about the Cowboys, so he would be saying some stuff and then get off to the Michael Jordan or the Cowboys, and it's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, you've been told you got to put on some weight. Uh -huh. Working on that a little bit? For sure. I've been, I've been in the weight room. I've just been working on my body just so I could be NBA ready for my body. I can give you some if you want. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of it over yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, but what, what's been the most difficult off-the-court transition in terms of getting your body ready that you maybe didn't have to do in high school or college that's different from what they expect from you in the NBA? Just the busy days and then make sure I'm eating right. You, you have a lot of interviews, appearances, and a lot of things that go on, and you have to feel your body the right way to perform. So I feel like just adjusting to that. What's one of the food items that you've cut out that you miss? Whew, I haven't cut out anything. Yeah, you need some game weights, Smitty. I need to, 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 to cut out something. I know I, I cut out, game weight, I cut so out fish fillets. <laughs> that <Okay>. was my thing. <laughs> yeah, I haven't cut out nothing yet. Okay, got you. You might want to have done that anyway, though. <laughs> 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 what, tell us about your workouts with, with the various teams that, that, that brought you in. What, what, were any of them unique? Was there anything that you thought that they were testing you on that you weren't, uh, that you were surprised that they did with you? Uh, they all kind of was the same in their own ways. And at the end of the day, they just wanted to know who I am. They, they watch film and they know how I play. So they wanted to bring me in just to have me and have see what my impact is on them. Have you got a chance to pick any pros' brains about just next steps for you? Have you got a chance to talk to guys that played in the NBA? Have they given you some great advice? Yeah, in LA, LeBron's at the workout mm. and I was able to talk to him. And he just kind of, his message was just stay true to myself, make sure I keep working hard. and. You know, I'll make it, and then I talked to one of my favorite players, Jamal Crawford, on Twitter, and I mean, I just wanted to talk to him, reach out to him, and he reached out back, so that was, like, amazing just to hear advice from the older guys like that. Is he ever going to stop playing? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> he still got it. <laughs> he does, and he's probably watching right yeah, now is. because Jamal watches everything NBA-related. Well, uh, Jared, we wish you the best of luck. Congratulations to reaching this point. We're, we look forward to chatting with you down the road. Thank you. There Thank he you. is, the Big 12 Player of the Year, Jared Plain. Culver. Plain. Yes, That's tipping us off here from the Grand Hyatt in the 2019 NBA Draft Future Stars presented by State Farm. We come back to New York City. We'll be joined by the likes of Zion Williamson and coming up next, DeAndre Hunter. Back here at the Grand Hyatt in New York City, it is the 2019 NBA Draft Future Stars presented by State Farm, and we have a national champion in our presence. You still riding high from that national championship with Virginia, DeAndre Hunter? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it was a great experience. Um, just carrying it on to the draft now. Are, are you able to compartmentalize and think about that's in the past, and now you got to focus on your professional career, which is going to start Thursday night? Yeah, I mean, I put it in the past, but I still think about it. Uh, I still see videos and things like that, so... Uh, when I see things like that, it just brings back memories. You're going to be talking trash wait, to all wait, the guys wait, wait. here. You, you just won a national championship. <laughs> you put it in the past? As, for right now. For right now. <laughs> just I'm just, right now. just focusing on it's the draft for right now. It's a business, man. Come yeah, on. Yeah. You've got to take care of that. You're talking yeah. some trash to the other guys here? No, nah, not right now. They haven't They haven't been saying anything too crazy. So. I mean, we just talked to Jared Culver. You rubbing it in his face a little bit or no? No, no, no. He knows what's up, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let's talk about DeAndre. Just this entire process. How has it been for you? The workouts, this media, yeah. so far as it... Um, the highs, the lows? I mean, yeah, it's been a fun experience. Um, just something I've been dreaming about for a while, something I've been seeing as a kid, guys going through the draft. So I'm just taking it all in, just not taking it for granted. When you look at your game, I, I just really want to hit right to 44% shooting from three. What what was the change and what did you do that summer to get to that that number? Because that's a huge number, especially for Virginia. You know, your coach Tony yeah. Bennett <laughs> and a lot of possessions. Yeah. I mean, it was just the work I put in the off season. Just got up a lot of shots, uh, a lot of game shots. I felt like that was the biggest thing, not just going through the reps just to do them, but getting game shots at a, at a good pace. I felt like that really helped me throughout the season. Did you change anything mechanic-wise? No, nah, same yeah. shot. Yeah. Same shot. Yeah. So Smitty talks about three-point shot. You also were the National Defensive Player of the Year. We, we throw around the term three and D guy a lot in the NBA. Is that, is that a label that, that you embrace, or is it something that you feel like is, is not a, a fair title to have? I mean, I embrace it, but I mean, I'm definitely working to be more than that. Uh, but it doesn't really matter what I am right now. I haven't played a game, so uh, what I'm labeled doesn't really matter. It's just once I get there, what I do, I feel like I can prove I could do more. You know, your mindset in that national championship game, I was there getting a chance to call that game. It was all offensively. You know, you're going to play D. Just take me through what turned on that light where you started to take over the game and have the ball in your hand and handle it a little bit more. 
I mean, it was the last half of the season. Uh, it was the final game of the year. Uh, I just wanted to be aggressive, and that was my mindset, just be aggressive, just take those shots, even if I miss, keep shooting. 27 points, nine rebounds in that national championship victory. How, how do you prepare for a moment on that stage when you know the entire world is watching? Yeah, it's just all the work you put in in the offseason. Uh, I mean, the, the practice gym is not the same as those arenas, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just those reps that you get up. And once the game time comes, no matter where you are, it's just those reps that you put up, you just make you feel more confident. Did, did we in the media make too much of the year before in the first round? I, guess, and I know you, you were injured with the, the wrist injury, but did, did, we, did we make too much of that motivating you on a daily basis, or was that a legit thing in the back of your mind on a regular basis? No, nah, that was that was real. Uh, we talked about it in the offseason, and that was definitely one of our goals just to overcome that and get past that on the upcoming season. Well, the DeAndre, I mean, you look at your fundamentals, they're so solid. How has Coach Bennett helped you? And also, when you look at the next level for you, what do you want to work on before you get a chance to be selected by an NBA team or get a chance to play in your first game? I mean, yeah, Coach Bennett helped me a lot. Uh, he definitely helped me a lot with my shot, uh, helped me a lot with my ball handling, just overall, like you said, the fundamentals. but. Uh, going to the next level, I'm just looking forward to be more creative off the dribble, uh, just do things that I feel like I could do before and just get back to doing things like that. Now, DeAndre, you know, you won a national championship. You put your name in the draft. So you can look in the camera right now and tell Coach Bennett, y'all should have played a little bit faster. <laughs> 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 more numbers. Admit yeah, it. You willing to do that now? <laughs> No, we good. I think we did. We had a we had a good game plan. He's still to trying work to help recruit. That's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, did, did you watch a, a lot of the NBA finals and and think at all about how the NBA has gotten to be so much about offense and and fast paced, but we're seeing the Toronto Raptors mm -hmm. and Kawhi Leonard, a guy who's got the ability to slow it down and hit from the mid range like yourself. Yeah. Were you watching that and thinking, uh, you know, I I, that, I can play this. way. I can fit in this game. Yeah, I mean, I watch Kawhi Leonard a lot, so uh, I love the way he plays. He plays on both ends, and uh, like you said, the the Warriors are more an up-and-down team. Guys shoot long threes, but I feel like the Raptors were more fundamental. Uh, like you said, Kawhi could hit that mid-range jumper, so, I mean, when I was watching the game, I felt like I could, I could fit in. You're one of those players on the defensive end can guard one through four, but on the offensive end, where do you think you're most better slated at, to two, to three, or maybe even a stretch four? Um, I mean, I, I really couldn't say. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought I could play all those positions is not necessarily one that I'm particularly better at um, but it doesn't like I said it doesn't matter now it's just once I get there I could prove that and we'll see age is a funny thing in, in the NBA Smitty's old we know that <laughs> but we speak to to the guys who are in this chair who are not yet 19 or who are 19 we say they're too young yeah and you're 21 and you're too old yeah what what are what's the feedback you've gotten from teams about a guy who's got experience which is something that Guys like Smitty used to have a lot of when they were getting drafted, and now is an uncommon thing. I mean, yeah, it's just different for me. Uh, the being 21, being labeled as uh, older players, just like kind of weird for me. But I mean, I embrace it. Uh, I feel like my maturity helps me, and I don't see it as a negative thing. What 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 have teams told you? What, what what's the feedback you've gotten about the experience that you've gathered? Really, three years right at, at the University of Virginia. Uh, just that it helps me a lot. Uh, like I said, it's not a negative thing. It's just uh, more of a positive, and that it's not it's not bad for me to be a little older than the rest of the guys. Looking back at, at your roles, how it changed through your time. You were the sixth man of the year, and then last year you, you start every game. Mm -hmm. Is that prepare you for? What may come your way, which is maybe not plugging into a starting role in the NBA right away. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in the lineup, I've seen it all. Uh, it was it were games I didn't play at all. Uh, it was games I played for one half and then playing the second half. And fast forward to my next year, I was playing most of the entire game. So, I mean, I know what it feels to be like in both positions, and I'm comfortable with whatever happens. Now, when you when you hear your name called. Just tell me how excited you'll be. I know it's a dream come true. Yeah. You have any surprises on what outfit you're wearing? Ooh. You're gonna give her something. Uh, a little uh, flashy, or you yeah, more concerned? I have a nice little J.C. Penney suit, so okay. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be nice. All right. Yeah. Did you pick it out? Yeah. You got we, a stylist already? Nah, we we work together on it. We work together on it, so yeah, we'll, you'll see it. it. Don't don't be like some NBA players who say that their clothes get laid out for them on their bed. <laughs> oh no no no. You're grown man. Yeah, I can pick my own. <laughs> DeAndre Hunter. Thanks so much for taking some time. We'll speak no to you again Thursday night at the draft. Best of luck to you. Uh, thank you. There he is, a national champion and a presumptive lottery pick in the 2019 NBA draft. Our coverage continues. We'll hear. He's a very high-level shooter, great ball handler, great court vision. What can this guy not do? John Morant, Murray State University.
born in Augusta, Georgia. Ja is showing it all. When I look in the mirror, I just see a dude who's been through a lot and faced a lot of adversity, but didn't give up and just continue to work and everything's paying off for him. enjoying what he is doing. I fell in love with basketball from being around it with my family. Basketball is everything to me. It's really all I've been around since I was young. Highly competitive, elite vision and athleticism. I describe my game as smooth, um, high IQ, who likes to get his teammates involved first and doesn't force it. Does anybody have the foot speed to stay in front of Ja Moran? My greatest strength on the court is being able to see things before they happen. With an icing on the cake from Ja. I'm, I'm out of my game after Russell Westbrook, just like how he play an all-around game. Ja Moran has a brilliant career ahead of him. Making this lead to the NBA means a lot to me. I feel like I do belong here. Back in New York City on NBA TV's coverage of the 2019 NBA Draft Future Stars presented by State Farm. Steve Smith, Jared Greenberg, and now the man that won the Bob Cousy Award as the nation's best point guard, John Morant. John, thanks for taking some time with us here. Thank you all. Hearing all of the interviews that you've been doing uh, throughout the course of the college basketball season leading up to now, the, the thing that struck me first is you're 19 years old, and, and I don't understand how you have found this balance of the incredible confidence that you have while also still being humble and hungry for more. Where, where do you think that came from? Um, I think most of the credit goes to my, my parents and my family. Uh, I felt like they raised me the right way and um, taught me just how I'd be a, a great person all around. And also um, my background, my story of uh, coming from under the radar um, obviously allowed me to be humble. And um, in order to overcome that, I had to be confident in myself at the same time. What I love is, Ja, is watching you play, like you say, you attack, but it's not just scoring. It's your passing. Uh, it's your level of just wanting to win. And that's what I love. Uh, talk to me, where did that come from? Whereas you're going to do whatever it takes to win. And obviously you put up unbelievable numbers, but you see most people trying to focus on the two or three things they do well. It yeah. seems like you, you're trying to put your imprint on the entire game. Yeah, um, I'm really just never satisfied. Um, I always feel like there's room for improvement. And um, I'd rather somebody tell me the negative than tell me something positive. So um, after every game, um, I ask my parents, my family, like, what did I do bad? And they tell me, and then I go watch and see, like, what I could have do to change, like, why I did, whatever. And um, I just feel like I try to help the team in any way I can. Uh, take whatever role they give me and whatever I can do to help the team win, I'm going to do. Well, you, you're playing that position. We call that that position, the point guard position. Not only that you have to be a leader, but you got to be able to tell guys no. You got to be able to tell guys put them in place. Are you ready for that challenge as a 19 year old, like Jared said? We're playing with some veterans, some all stars, to be able to put them in the right place. Um, yes, I think I'm ready. Um, I think I've been a leader all my life. Um, being at the point guard position, I feel like you have to be very vocal and a leader of the team. And uh, coming in, um, learning from veteran guys, um, my freshman year at Murray. Um, but still having to talk to them, you know, sometimes like if they did something wrong, anything, I think allowed me to be more comfortable and I feel like I'm ready for the next level. I know you watch the game a lot. Have you gotten the opportunity to speak to some guys who play in the league? Um, yes, not in uh, like face to face, but like through uh, DM messages. You're sliding into that DM? <laughs> 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 Come on, John. Let me get some text messages. There's a difference yeah. between a text and a DM. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> um, for, for you to be the first guy since the stat was recorded to go an average 20 and 10, and you, you're in the mix for National Player of the Year. I know some, some organizations did give you that award. And before the season, your own conference you played in didn't even select you as the preseason player of the year. I know you're confident, but could you have dreamed 12 months ago to be in this position that you're in now? Tough question. Um, I always felt like I was good enough to play at uh, the NBA level and um, be the person that I am right now. But obviously, it took a lot of work. And I'm not going to lie and sit here and say, like, yeah, I knew I'd be in this position right now. But I knew eventually my hard work and everything that I've been through, my determination would, um, would have gotten me here. With that said, now that you are here, are you, are you pretty confident? Are you allowing yourself to accept the fact that you're going to be the number two pick in the draft? Um, yes, but like I said, still never satisfied. I know um, I still have a lot of more work to do um, after my name is called. Obviously, it's going to be a very emotional night coming from 
um, being under the radar or whatever. But at the same time, I'm going to be happy for myself, but I'm going to continue to work because I feel like I still have a lot to prove. Well, let will follow up on that because I've heard you speak a lot about being under the radar and overlooked and going the mid-major route. But now you're no longer the guy who's overlooked. You're the guy who's got really high expectations. How different is that for you, just the mentality, the approach, to go from a guy that people didn't look at to a guy everyone's looking at? Um, it was difficult, obviously something I wasn't used to. Um, with the attention and everybody saying my name, I went from a nobody to one of the most talked about players in this year's draft. But um, through it all, I, I just continue to be myself. Um, I stayed uh, Ja and I always been humble and it led me to this point right here. Take me through your first year in college to your second year because that shooting went to another roof. And what, what impressed me is you get all the attention you still shot 50%, still shot a high percentage from the three-point line with a lot of attention. Just took me to that summer, what you did to raise those averages. Um, I felt like my freshman year was a very big learning experience for me. Um, and I feel like that's why I think I'll be effective um, on the NBA level because I've been through it already. My freshman year, I felt like I was taking four shots that I forced myself to take because I was used to shooting a lot in high school, um, being the main guy. And once I finally like accepted my role and understood like what I had to do for my team to win, um, it allowed me to play at a high level. And coming into my sophomore year, um, I got with Coach Nichols, and he was like, "We about to step it up a level." So it was a lot of workouts from morning to um, the afternoon, and a lot of shooting, um, trying to get my release quicker, and just getting more comfortable with shooting the ball. And that's what I did, and was able to shoot a. So, so you talked about you want to hear the negatives. You know, some things is going to be like we all had coming out as players. They don't say he's too small. He's not strong enough. What's your answer to that? Um, I actually want them to keep saying that. Um, I feel like negative energy motivates me, and it only makes me better. And um, I thrive through that. <laughs> you know, I've been hearing it all my life from high school to now. And my dad was my first hater before I even had him. He was calling me. <laughs> He was calling me overrated and said he wasn't satisfied. So that really doesn't bother me. So I know they're going to continue to say it, but I'm going to continue being job. So, so when you, your name is called, you got some words for your dad? Yeah. No, I don't say no, I, no, <laughs> Yeah, I do. Right now. <laughs> I do because um, I feel like he could have said something positive, but now I understand what he was doing. He was just preparing me for this. So I think the words would be thank you mm -hmm. because he had the opportunity to play professionally and turn it down just to raise me. And now it's like I'm living my dream and his dream through me. So uh, we technically we both kind of made it. And I just want to thank him for everything he's done. Good answer because I'm a dad because I was, you know, trying to keep your dad from coming on set right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> so are we going to be hearing your dad like yelling in the stands? Just negative things to you. We're like, who's that? Who's that guy in the stands? Find his family to, to, to get this guy out of here. Uh, nah, he, <laughs> he won't say it like that because he know it probably be some fan saying so. But um, he normally just uh, tell me something throughout the games. I think high school and college, he was on the first row, and he was able to be like, all right, now like you forced too many shots, attack or something like that, and it helped me. But after the game, he was like. Like, you still ain't doing anything. Like, Marquette, after the triple-double, I felt like, all right, I played decent. Like, nah, like, that wasn't enough. enough. Yeah. yeah, so. We, we do got to ask you about the news that came out in the last couple of weeks that, that you had a uh, procedure done on your knee. How serious is it, and when do you expect to get back on the court? Um, it wasn't very serious. Uh, serious. It was just a clean-out. Um, I actually got to play on the court a week later after the surgery, and um, now I'm just waiting to after the draft to get back on the court. Now, I need to ask the question, you know, you get your name called. What are you wearing? You got some exciting stuff for us? Because, you know, we, me and Jared know your tailor very yeah. well. So I, I, I'm putting a little pressure on him. Uh, does he have you right? <laughs> yeah, he had me right. He had me right. Um, definitely it'll be opening some eyes, but it's not too much. So if I don't approve of it, I'm going to make sure he give you another suit for free. All right, all right. Good <laughs> deal. Yeah. And if I like it, get me a suit for free. All right, dude. There he is. John Morant joining us here, the presenter number two pick in the NBA draft. Best of luck to you. Thanks for taking some time. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Got plenty more to do here from New York City at the Grand Hyatt. It is part of our media coverage of the uh, 2019 NBA draft. Come on back. we got much more, including a chat with the presumptive number one pick in the draft, Zion Williamson. Coming up.